Hello and welcome. What a historical moment. Congrats to India. They made it. They officially surpassed China and with that are the most populous country on our planet. Now as I have quite a significant amount of people watching from India, I was thinking a lot about how I can appreciate your achievement. I was going through many options and came to the conclusion that covering a momentum trading strategy on the flagship equity index Nifty 50 will be probably the best gift imaginable. Let's take a look at the strategy. We are checking the past 12 month performance of all Nifty stocks and we are buying the top 5 performers and hold them for one month. Simple as that. Important disclaimer, concepts from this video are not an investment advice, videos for educational and entertainment purposes only. Alright, so before I'm getting into it, important note. As I need to test out some new formats, I will deviate from my usual approach in this video. Instead of coding interactively and in real time, I prepared the notebook going over it step by step. So first of all, as you see, we need some libraries, Y Finance, NumPy and Pandas. Then I'm reading in a Wikipedia table, which is containing all stocks in the Nifty. Important remark here, survivorship bias is not in scope for this video, but I will link a video where I'm exactly showing you how you get rid of it. Then I'm adding .ns to the stock names, simply because when pulling price data for those stocks, Y Finance needs this additional information for non-American stocks. NS simply stands for NSE, National Stock Exchange of India. After that, I'm transforming that to a list and pass it to the download function of Y Finance and pull the close price for all nifty stocks and I'm going back until 2012. With that, as you see, I'm getting price data for all nifty stocks starting in 2012 going until today. After that, I'm calculating daily returns by applying the PCT change function on that price data frame. So with that, I'm getting a data frame containing daily returns instead of absolute prices. I'm using those returns now to accumulate them on a monthly base. If you are not familiar with return calculation, I will link a video explaining in detail why I'm taking plus one and the product here. So how do I understand this resulting data frame, monthly returns? A Deniant, I apologize for any mispronunciation, was rising by 44% in January 2012. This data frame is quite important because we can derive all relevant information for the strategy out of this one. First, you can use this to calculate the past 12 month returns but you can also calculate the return of the one month holding period. So first let's calculate the past 12 month returns out of this. So I'm rolling over the monthly return data frame and apply a product function on that. Mathematically, this is the exact same as when I'm accumulating the daily returns above. With that, I have my 12 month return data frame. So as an example, a Danient was dropping by 6% over the last 12 months until this date. Now, the only thing we have to do now is to build a filtering mechanism as we need to find the top 5 performers for any given date. So instead of considering all 50 stocks, we need to find the 5 largest values in every single row. So as an example, I define top for top, for top performers by screening the 12 month return data frame for the first date. So simply that date. And simply applied the n largest function to get the top five values. So as you see, the top five performers here over the last 12 months were e.g. Bash Finance with a return of 124%. Just as a reminder, the returns are currently in a format which is convenient for calculations. So this number means Bash Finance has 2.24x, so roughly more than doubled. So one US dollar in Bash Finance would be 2.24 US dollar 12 months later. In percentage terms, that would be a 124% increase. 
Okay, so next I'm extracting the relevant date of the top performers. And that might be a bit counterintuitive due to that the name property of this series is the date. So in December 2012, I have those top performers. I need this date because this is the reference date for the one month holding period. Once I've determined the top performers, I need to have the performance of the portfolio of the subsequent month. And to get the subsequent month, I'm using a simple trick here. I'm filtering the monthly return data frame for the top performer's name, which is again the date. And then I'm excluding that date and just take the next row and end up with only the row of the subsequent month. You see here, this is the subsequent month to this one here. As you see, I still have all 50 stocks, so 50 columns. I would also filter for the top performers actual names and this is simply the index of the top performers. So this is the index of that series. So if I'm filtering here, I'm getting the relevant returns for the holding period, which you see here. And if I assume I buy those five stocks equally weighted, I can just calculate my mean return by taking the mean on axis one, meaning I just take the horizontal mean here. So this number is telling me if I would have bought the portfolio of the top performing stocks over the last 12 months, the return over the holding period of the subsequent month would be roughly minus 2.5%. And next, I'm just setting up a function doing those exact steps. And this function is taking a date as a parameter. So I'm getting the momentum portfolio return for a given date. Note that you're always passing the portfolio formation date, so the reference date for the past 12 months. The momentum profit is always the profit of the subsequent month. So this is the January return. Next, I'm just passing all relevant dates to this function in a loop. So I'm using a loop over the monthly 12 return data frames index containing all relevant dates and store the momentum profits in a list. I'm skipping the last element simply because I cannot know the most recent return as I cannot look into the future. So with that, I'm getting all momentum profits and I can accumulate them again. And I get this insane result of 7x. So think about it, following this simple logic, would have ended up in a capital increase of 600%. Now, is it that good? We cannot really tell without comparing this to the Nifty performance itself. And here I'm just pulling price data for the Nifty. So this is the ticker symbol for the Nifty. And cumulate the daily returns and I'm ending up with 3.8x, so 280% percent return in comparison to 600 percent return. As said, you would need to take survivorship bias and transaction fees into account, but still quite an interesting result. So that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching. Hit the like button for similar topics and follow-up videos and let me know your thoughts below. And I'm also looking forward to see you in the upcoming videos.